Tulsa Opera is one of the country's oldest and most storied opera companies, and uh, reputation for artistic excellence continues to this day. Uh, right now, Tulsa Opera is a very well-respected regional opera company, and it's one of the few that has an express commitment to doing an American opera in our main stage season every year. From the very beginning, Tulsa has always been in love with the arts. As an early oil boom town, the allure of industry and commerce brought forth a thriving city filled with a hunger for the arts and culture. Of course, we did not have any sewers, street paving, parks, or sidewalks, and not much of a water system. But these facilities were luxuries and could wait, whereas an opera house loomed as an immediate necessity. The year was 1904, just six years after being incorporated as a city, and the first record of an opera being performed in Tulsa took place in the Epperson Opera House on Main Street, where Faust was performed for a small audience. In 1914, Convention Hall opened at the corner of Brady and Boulder, and for the next 15 years, this venue, now known as Brady Theater, hosted many opera greats of that time. In the early 1930s, even in the midst of the Great Depression, Tulsa's love affair with opera survived. Albert Lucan, Dean of Music at the University of Tulsa, decided to take on a mammoth production of Aida, taking over Skelly Stadium and hosting nearly 6,000 guests for the opening night, still the record attendance for any one opera performance in Tulsa. After World War II, opera began to flourish in Tulsa even more. On the evening of December 4, 1948, a capacity crowd gathered at Central High School Auditorium to witness a sold-out performance of La Traviata, and the Tulsa Opera Club is born. This new era of opera was made possible in large part by Ralph and Iona Sassano, a couple of young opera singers visiting from New York who decided to stay and begin the Tulsa Opera Club. By the 1950s, the name was officially changed to Tulsa Opera Incorporated, and Lady Maud Lorton Myers, a co-founder and board member, decided it was time to gather more community support for the young company. She began a recruitment campaign of Tulsa's most prominent citizens, garnering financial support to transition the performances from light operettas to more lavish grand opera affairs. In 1955, a presentation of Madama Butterfly, under the artistic direction of managing director Ralph Sassano, moved Tulsa Opera squarely onto the stage of national prominence. In the fall of 1960, an article appeared in Life magazine featuring a 4,000 prism chandelier that was handmade for Tulsa Opera's performance of La Traviata. After reaching such notoriety, this sparkling set decoration drew applause all on its own when the curtains opened on Act Three. In the early 60s, the Guild of Tulsa Opera established a children's opera workshop bringing the world of opera to younger generations. In 1962, Taking full advantage of a prolonged strike of the Metropolitan Opera in New York, Tulsa Opera's production of The Barber of Seville brought together five Met stars and a top stage director. The tradition of attracting national level talent to Tulsa Opera endeavors continued throughout the next several decades. And the top names in opera, including stars like Simon Estes, Beverly Sills, and Luciano Pavarotti, mesmerized local audiences with their vast vocal talents. During the 1990s through the beginning of the 21st century, Tulsa Opera expanded its interest globally, bringing in international talent and taking part in collaborations that would bring worldwide interest. This era included the debut of famed Russian soprano Olga Kondina, a much heralded co-production of Wagner's Tannhauser, with Finland's Sabalina Opera and Russia's Mariinsky Theater and the global premiere production of The Little Prince, based on the beloved French children's book. The time period also saw exciting Oklahoma premieres of Dialogues of the Carmelites, The Cunning Little Vixen, and Eugene Onyegin. This era also saw the debut of several young singers, including Joyce DiDonato and Stephanie Blythe, whom have gone on to major stardom. Under the leadership of current artistic director Kostis Protopapas, Tulsa Opera has continued to grow from this impressive history, presenting beloved operatic classics, but also beginning a concentrated commitment to the American repertoire. 
Right now, our uh, artistic mission focuses in high quality productions of the standard repertoire that feature up and coming American singers. So a lot of the singers that uh, you see in our productions are people that are well underway to major national and international careers. And it's very exciting to see them at this stage in their careers. Opera is a living, breathing art form, and uh, new operas are being written every day. It's not a thing of the past, and we have uh, an especially um, rich crop of operas written here in America that are based in American life, and they have roots in American music. So um, for us to produce one of these every year is uh, a challenge, as it's a very exciting opportunity for growth for us and for our audience. This era has seen Oklahoma premieres of exciting American works, including Dead Man Walking, The Most Happy Fellow, Elmer Gantry, and the upcoming production of Carlisle Floyd's Of Mice and Men.